so we welcome back. Uh, this is going to be the, the last uh, short video on, on data manipulation and, and data wrangling. And I want to talk about how we merge data. So specifically, we, up to now, we focused on data where all the data we're interested in is in just one table. Uh, but sometimes we enter, have situations where we have you know, s some information in one table that we want to relate to information in another table to combine these two pieces, these two data tables to do an overall analysis to join the joins multiple uh, data tables. Uh, so imagine in this case, if I have my original data set on frogs and tadpoles, and then I go out and collect uh, data on frog eggs in the same pond, now I have a data set on, on frog eggs and I want to add that extra column to this data set so that I can do additional analyses. In this case, uh, since the, um, the egg data is of the same size of the original data, so it's the same number of rows, and uh, it's also already organized in the same order as the original data set, I can do this by just binding the two together. So R has a, a CBind function for combining columns from two data sets, and I just, you just give the two data sets you want to combine, and it merges them together. There's also an RBind function that adds rows to a data set. So if I had a data set you know, so from this year, and then I had a data set from last year, I might be able to, you know, in the, uh, organize in the same format with the same column headers. I can use rbind to put them together. <clears throat> that said, you know, it's actually more common to have data sets that are not necessarily the same dimensions. So here, imagine that I've got my my original frog and tadpole data, but I, I now uh, since I need to match this with other data, I need to know, I've, I've added this site ID column that says, you know, which site did, you know, did they, this data come from? So imagine each pond or each lake had its own ID that we were using to keep track of it. And there might be information in another table about, you know, the lat long or the other environmental covariates, or and these are all things they might need to merge in. But in this case, let's imagine I have uh, data from, on, on again, uh, frog eggs, but now I've, it turns out I actually have data for more sites on frog eggs than I have for frogs and tadpoles. Uh, and so they're not the same size. They're also not in the same order. Um, and if I was doing this manually, I'd have to sort one and then go through manually and try to line them up. Uh, but R can do this automatically through a, for us using a function called merge. And merge is pretty straightforward. Uh, you give it, and it's, it's in the base package. So this is kind of old school R. And um, you give it the first the data set you, you want to start with, the data set you want to merge into it. And by just tells us uh, what columns do you use to match between the two. Uh, there's an optional way of, of having by X and by Y separately. So if the, if the columns you want to match are not named the same thing, but contain the same information, um, in this case, a site identifier, you know, I can match across them across data sets. So, here I'm saying I have a site ID column in both of these data sets and those match up with each other. And I just want R to merge these two data sets together. And it can do this and give me this new data table that combines uh, the two and it's, it's matched. And it's the same dimension as the X data, uh, the first uh, data set that's being passed as opposed to the Y data set. Um, and if I needed to merge it the other way, if I wanted to if I, if I was interested in all of the egg data and wanted to merge in just the frogs and tadpoles, I'd do it in the other order. I'd start with eggs and then I'd put uh, frogs and tadpoles second and I'd end up with a lot of rows. Oh, and this about a third of the rows would be NAs for frogs and tadpoles because they, there wasn't a match. Um, also want to mention that in, like what I've done in a lot of videos with the exception of some of the, the wide and long tidy uh, functions I referenced earlier, um, I've, tended to rely on a lot of the base functions, but there are also a lot of uh, additional packages out there uh, within the tidyverse. And uh, one that's particularly helpful for uh, data manipulation uh, and organization and, and uh, subsetting and, and all of this sort of stuff and, and merging across data sets is the dplyr. And again, dplyr is part of this larger tidyverse set of uh, functions, uh, packages created by Hadley Wickham and his colleagues. And also point that out that uh, the RStudio website has cheat sheets like this one 
for a lot of the uh, tidyverse packages as well as a wide number of other packages that are just handy references to kind of uh, get a get a quick reference for what the functions are and how how they're used that can help you kind of sort out what you're doing so that you're not like spending forever reading through you know the the detailed help function uh, help um, pages for uh, functions that might not be relevant to what you're trying to do. Uh, lots that you could learn, build, do to build on top of what we've covered, but I think the goal here is to cover uh, the basics of, of data wrangling that sets us up for our, our next unit, which will be on, on data visualization. Thanks.